what's going on across the country. Now, we got a couple different things that we want to talk about. I had a lot to pick from. So I didn't want to go all Chicago today because then y'all going to be acting like I'm picking on Chicago, even though Chicago was doing some crazy stuff out here in these streets. I didn't want to go all Chicago today, but I got to keep y'all informed before we get to the money, before we get to the positivity. I got to keep y'all informed of what's happening across the country. All right. Uh, let's let's get into it. New overnight, a food delivery driver was shot to death in his car in Englewood. Glenn Marshall is live at the District 7 police station with more. Good morning, Glenn. Hey, good morning, guys. Now, that driver was able to tell police he heard gunfire and felt pain on his body. Now, police are looking for his killer after he was killed. Now, police are saying it happened around 630 last night near the 57th and Sangamon Corner in the Inglewood neighborhood. We're told the 53-year-old delivery food driver was headed northbound on Sangamon when he says he felt pain after hearing gunshots. And that man kept driving and then struck a parked vehicle. He was taken to UOC's emergency room where it was determined that he would have the gunshot wound to his chest. He also later died from those injuries. As of right now, no one has been placed in custody, but police are asking for your help. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, they would like you to contact them immediately. And I'm alive here in Englewood. I'm Glenn Marshall, WGN News. Now, let's, let's take a moment um, and recognize uh, this man's family and all of the hard work that a lot of these people go through on a regular basis. One of my biggest concerns when I opened up my first restaurant and I built it from scratch and I built it uh, for my father and then he passed away prior to me actually opening up the restaurant. But I, I finished it after he passed away and we ran it until we was able to get out of the lease because it wasn't for me in the first place. Uh, and I had other things that I wanted to accomplish and do that was outside of running that on a day to day basis. Uh, one of my biggest concerns with opening up a restaurant, especially in an environment and in areas where people say, oh, my God, they treat us like animals. It's systematic. Look at all of this plexiglass and the bars and stuff is I wanted to give an experience to people um, that was best for them. No bars, no plexiglass, no nothing. Right. And so I did that. But I was very, very concerned every single day, not only with my own safety, because I was a public figure, right? And I was using my platform in order to generate more visibility for the business, which worked out beautifully. And I remember on opening day, I actually slept that weekend for about three hours total over a, over a period of three days because we were so busy and a line was just wrapped around the building. Uh, and that's what they call a honeymoon phase. And that was the first time that I wound up getting my CPL. I had to get a gun license and I had to start carrying uh, legally because I was closing up and I had to shut things down and I would always go up there and check on the people. I wouldn't just have them do a safe drop. I will also make sure that I went up and I checked on the people and I brought people with me to make sure that we closed up almost every single night uh, without any issues. Right. And it was just like frightening. It was it was frightening to think of what could happen to my employees if anybody was to run up in there and try to rob it because we had people steal. We had employees steal. We had people take stuff out of the back door. I had a dude that came in because our call in wasn't a regular phone. It was actually an iPhone. So we had a customer steal an iPhone and then we put it out on Facebook. And then his mama made him bring it back because it was a, a young knucklehead. And he didn't want me to put the footage out because he didn't know that I was really out here on the Internet like that. Right. And he didn't want to become a, a sucker and forever live in infamy as a result of just stealing an iPhone. But it was one of the most dangerous things. And so we don't really take into consideration a lot of the stuff that these people are doing just to feed their family, just to make some extra dollars, just to be able to get people their food. A delivery, food delivery driver in Chicago, and I've been covering this for well over a month now, how Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, delivery drivers, DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, all of these platforms, you know, they open up these services in these environments. And I know a lot of people don't even know a lot of the drivers that I take. They don't even go into certain neighborhoods no more. One guy said that he pulled up to he drove by and it was an abandoned house and it was trying to get. He was like, man, I'm not stopping. And he just kept going. Went straight through the stop sign and everything. Be very, very careful. Nobody should be losing their life as a food delivery driver trying to deliver some DoorDash over to somebody's crib and then you just get a random shot and then you just die after you talk to the police. That's unreasonable. It's unreasonable. It's unconscionable. Like, it doesn't make sense. Are we so evil that y'all just peeling off shots at the DoorDash guy for no reason? You don't even know him? 
he go to deliver some food over somebody's house over on the south side of Chicago, and that's just the end of his life? And then y'all want to complain about what's going... Because we know, look, the police ain't never catching nobody in Chicago. One thing that we see on a regular basis is that regardless of how many DoorDash drivers get shot, no matter how many carjackings that they are, the police is so busy trying to get the migrants out of the Chicago Police Department, and they ain't never catching nobody. Yet we got Brandon Johnson. Don't worry, we're going to bring him to the front of the congregation today. Yet we got Brandon Johnson calling these large gatherings and is refusing to address the issues and understaffing and underfunding these, these initiatives, especially when it comes to the safety of our, our police officers and our residents. Yet we, we throw in billions of dollars at migrants. We'll get there. Uh, but that's just Chicago specifically. Uh, over in Atlanta, it's a little different. Just released from Atlanta police involving an 11 year old shot several times. Atlanta News first anchor Savannah Louie is at the first alert breaking news desk with more on this. Savannah. Blair, Tracy, right now, Atlanta police need your help identifying three suspects who have been involved in the shooting of an 11 year old. I want to show you some new video. This just into Atlanta News first here. This shows the moments that an 11 year old was running from three male suspects on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. That victim who was found by those three suspects who started shooting, uh, then hit, hitting him twice. The victim was taken to the hospital. And again, I know this video is a little bit difficult to see here, but take a close look. Police are hoping this is the video here that will help them catch those suspects. You see them right here on your screen. So you see the 11 year old in the upper uh, left hand corner, right? And then you see the three suspects. Now they shooting in the air like this or whatever, and they just so happen to hit an 11 year old. And they searching for the suspects. They searching for the suspects of the shooting. Now, this is Atlanta. Walking past a busy thoroughfare, throwing shots up in the air, shooting at an 11-year-old. That was his, an 11-year-old. An 11-year-old. Keep your kids safe, man. Keep your kids safe. If you can get them out of these school systems, get them out of there. If you can get them out of these liberal cities, then get them out of there. If you can get them out of these crime-ridden environments, don't let nobody tell you that you're not keeping them real. Get them out of there. Get your kids out of there, bro. We grew up in some really messed up environments, and we didn't know no better. But we know better now. And ain't nobody telling Ain't nobody calling the police. Ain't nobody helping the police capture whoever it is. I'm sure that it's somebody that looked at themselves on this this whole news thing and they was wishing for their op to be gone. And they op just so happened to be an 11 year old boy, which means that it's a strong possibility that whoever it is that these people are doing the shooting on Martin Luther. Look, 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 look. It's on Martin Luther King Drive in Atlanta. The shooting. How ironic. Didn't even recognize that until I seen it at the bottom of the screen. The shooting is on Martin Luther King Drive in Atlanta. How can y'all hold other people accountable for what you're doing to yourself? Every Martin Luther the King Drive that I didn't been down, every one of them, including here in Detroit, at some point, well, one of the choices, it seemed like it's cleaning up pretty well. But everyone that I'd have never been down has been trashed. Every Martin Luther King Drive. I think it's one in Daytona Beach. They got a, a Martin Luther King Drive. And it's toe up. But here's the key. When you leave these major cities and you walk away and you try to do something better, stop trying to take your dumb cultural habits with you. Don't nobody want to see y'all bad attitudes and y'all, uh, you trying to make sure that you go and you change. They shouldn't be banning me from my hair. No, no, no. You need to assimilate. I know that they don't want to hear this. People going to get mad at me. Oh, Anton, use a, use a this, use a that. Listen, fam, 
What you doing ain't working. Trump told y'all that when he first ran. He said, listen, I know y'all may not like me, except for the hip hop community when it was filling me. He said, listen, y'all schools is messed up. Y'all neighborhoods is towed up. Why don't we try it my way? Why don't we try something different? Are y'all going to continue to do the same thing that y'all been doing for the last 50 to 60 years? Y'all going to still do the same thing y'all been doing for the last 50 to 60 years. Don't leave and then bring your bad voting habits, your bad habits, your weed smoking, messing up the community, don't want to pay your bills, always got your trash out late, yelling at the delivery driver, messing up what's going on in school, being ghetto everywhere, twerking, turning things upside down, yelling at the teachers. We don't want your culture. We don't want your culture. We want good neighbors that do the right thing, that's not arguing and fighting, that is going to call the police if they see somebody driving their property values down. But that's not it. Over in Compton, they got the same thing. It's a bunch of other stuff going over there. But they did a street takeover in multiple different places. Yes, we're outside the Compton Sheriff's Station, but to be fair, these were happening all over South L.A. They even had one on the 6th Street Bridge, in, but it is here in Compton that they ended up with four people shot and where people are telling us they're tired. This is happening almost every weekend. Take a look at this. Security video shows people removing license plates before joining the street takeover you see on the corner of the camera view at Atlanta and Alondra in Compton. Just one of several street takeovers in Compton and South LA, including this one on Alondra and Central, where Compton sheriffs say shots were fired. Four people transported to local hospitals. It is out of control. I don't understand these kids. And we're all just standing there like, so we're coming down this street now? Tia Walker describing how vehicles fleeing from officers at one of the takeovers were speeding down their residential streets. I know it's... There's no easy solution to it, but I know that the solution is not to do nothing. Walker lives just blocks away from where this happened last April. A takeover and looting at the Arco on Alondra and... Does this look like a large gathering to you guys? A large peaceful gathering of youth that are masked up, of all races and creeds, black, white, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, they're all out there. They're all out there because the culture is not just based off of what's black. The culture is just what's trash. It's the things that we celebrate the most. Central. That's not too far from Ruben's Bakery, which was also looted after a street takeover earlier this month. Investigators did announce arrest, but Walker echoes many area residents with this point. There was the press conference. There was a lot of promises made. Those promises were forgotten within a couple months, and then we were back to just listening to endless takeovers. There's already been at least one death in Compton. 27-year-old Raymond Olivares killed last year. The engineer was on a walk with his fiance when they were hit by a vehicle that, according to investigators, was fleeing from law enforcement responding to a takeover. Residents around here say they fear there will be more. You know, when those cars are speeding, they can lose control, and that's it. You do know that um, for all of y'all that think that this is cool and all of this and for all of the parents that let their kids go out and they don't even know where they at and all of that, um, it only take one mistake. You basically driving a three to four thousand pound missile. It's literally a missile down the street. You know, I drive with my daughter every day. Every day I wake up, I take her to school and I let her drive um, because she gets her license next month and I let her drive and I'm giving her game and I'm, I'm guiding her today is snowing <clears throat> and it was a little slippery. So I forced her to put it in the slippery mode and, you know, in certain parts you switch it over in the four wheel drive. And I said, it's funny cause I was telling her this morning and I said, Hey, Les, I said, you gotta be careful. And she said, Oh no, dad, I'm doing everything right. I said, I know. I said, you did everything perfectly. But one thing that you didn't do 
is that you wasn't situationally aware of what they were doing over there. And she said, well, that was their fault. You know, it's their fault that they're doing it. I said, I know, but that's going to be your car and your life. Meaning that you got to be now just as situationally aware of how, how crazy everybody else around you, just as much as you are aware of what it is that you got going on. That's why I gave up my motorcycle, because I couldn't risk my life knowing that everybody is on their phone and there was too many people that tried to run me over or tried to wasn't paying attention because they was on their phone or they was listening to their music too loud and they didn't see me. So you learn to become a defensive driver in a vehicle. You now have to become a defensive driver. I'm teaching my daughter to become a defensive driver. Hey, anticipate how fast they coming up to that light. Hey, it's slippery. And, and these people that's all in these pickup trucks and they got this four wheel drive. Usually they get overconfident because they think that they're better than the regular cars that's going slower. And so they go a little too, too fast. So you got to watch out for them Jeeps. and You got to watch out for that pickup truck because they're going too fast. They're not being situationally aware. Right. And when it comes to these car meets, I know a lot of y'all think that it's cool. But let me tell you something. I've seen plenty of guys get their cars, cars hit. I've seen people get their cars impounded. I've seen guys run away from the police and kill somebody. I've seen a lot of things in my lifetime. For those of y'all that's familiar over here in Detroit, y'all know what them Dearborn car meets are. And then you go over to certain neighborhoods in Detroit and stuff, and we didn't know no better. We was idiots. We was dumb. But now that we know better, I don't want y'all to experience some of the same problems and issues and trouble that we went through. And then you're going to go home and act like everything is cool. It's not cool. It's not cool. You're messing up somebody's life, and you're possibly going to take somebody else's life. A guy walking down the street with his fiance, and then all of a sudden he get hit by a car that's fleeing from the police from a bunch of idiots that don't even realize how bad it is. And they've been watching and playing too much GTA. This is real life, man. These is real people. Y'all can't even control your cars on GTA. Y'all be hitting people in the game. You can't control that in real life. But everything is cool. Everything is culturally appropriate. All anti just kids know they're going to kill somebody. And then they're going to, you're going to have to be responsible for it because you're going to be saying, pray for my baby. And I'm going to be like, send them to jail and throw away the key. 